Hi, welcome to another IGCSE physics video. In this video, we're looking at section 1.9, which is momentum and impulse. In this video, we will learn about momentum, impulse. So what is momentum about? Generally, momentum is described as an object that is in motion. So say, if you had this car that was driving on a road in some direction, and it had some speed, then this car would have some momentum. However, in physics, it's defined as the product of mass and the velocity of an object. So let's say if we had this truck, which had a mass of about 5,000 kilograms, which is equal to five metric tons, then this truck, let's say, also had a mass of 30 meters per second. Then we can find the momentum of this truck using the formula P equals to mass times the velocity of that truck, where the letter P that I've written here means momentum. So let's find the momentum of this truck using this formula. Well, we know that momentum is represented by the letter P, which equals to the mass, which is 5,000 kilograms, times the velocity of this truck. And let's say that since it's driving in the rightwards direction, it has a velocity of plus 30 meters per second. So if, if it was traveling in a leftwards direction, then it would have a velocity of negative 30 meters per second. So in this case, the velocity would be positive 30 meters per second. And then this gives us 150,000 and then we multiply the units of mass with the units of velocity. So we get that the momentum is 150,000 kilograms times meters per second. So we also know that the units for momentum are the kilogram times the meter per second. Now let's jump back to this car that we first drew. And let's say that it had a mass of 3,000 kilograms. And let's say that the velocity was in the rightwards direction. So it would be positive velocity. And let's say that the velocity would be 60 meters per second. So it's traveling really fast. So using this formula for momentum, let's find the momentum of this car. So we know that the mass of this car is 3000 kilograms. And we know that the velocity of this car is positive 60 meters per second. So we can multiply the mass with the velocity of this car. And doing this on a calculator or in your head, you get 180,000 kilograms times meters per second. So this is the momentum of this car. Now, if we look at the answers for the momentum of this truck and the momentum of this car, we can see that something is strange. Generally, you'd expect a truck to have more momentum than a car. But in this case, we can see that even though the car's mass is about 2000 kilograms less than that of the trucks, which is 5000, the velocity of the car is a lot more than the velocity of the truck. It's twice as much as the velocity of the truck. So that plays a role in bringing the momentum of this car higher than the momentum of this truck. So we know that based on this formula, if you were to increase the mass, then the momentum of the object would increase proportionately as the momentum is proportional to the mass of the object. And similarly, if you were to increase the velocity of the object, then the momentum of the object would increase as well. Now let's talk about impulse. Impulse is defined as the time for which a force is exerted on an object. So in this case, we know that the keywords are the time and the second term is force. So we know that force is being exerted on an object for a certain amount of time. So we can say that impulse, which is represented by the letter I, equals to the force times the amount of time for which the force is exerted on the object. So let's say that you were playing tennis and you strike the tennis ball using your tennis racket with a force of three newtons. And let's say you apply this force on the tennis ball for a duration of three seconds. So the tennis racket stayed in contact with the ball for three seconds and it applied a force of three newtons on it. Well, using this formula, we can find out the impulse of the ball. So we know that the impulse I is equal to the force, which is three newtons, times the duration of the force, which is three seconds. And so if we multiply these two quantities, we get three times three, which is nine and times the units which are newtons and seconds. So we get nine newton seconds. So the newton seconds is the unit of impulse. Now this isn't the only definition for impulse. Impulse is also a measure of the change in momentum of an object. So in mathematical terms, this means that I, the impulse of the object, is equal to the change in momentum of the object. So where does this formula I equals to delta P come from? Well, this formula is derived from Newton's second law of motion. We know that from Newton's second law of motion, force is equal to the mass times the acceleration of an object. And we also know that the acceleration of an object is simply the change in velocity of an object over time. 
So we can change this acceleration sign with delta velocity over delta time. And then we also know that the change in velocity is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity because it's the change in velocity. So we can rewrite this as velocity final minus the initial velocity all over the change in time in delta t. And now in the next step, we can distribute this m to this term. So if we multiply m with each of these terms, we get that force is equal to mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial all over the change in time. We know that momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity of an object. And so a change in momentum must mean that the velocity of the object has also changed. So that would give mass times velocity final minus the mass times velocity initial. And we can also say that the change in momentum of an object is equal to the final momentum minus the initial momentum, pi. So we can replace this with the final momentum and this with the minus initial momentum. So force is equal to final momentum minus the initial momentum all over change in time. And we know that change in momentum equals to final momentum minus initial momentum. So force must equal change in momentum over change in time. And so this definition of Newton's second law of motion redefines what F equals MA means. Force is a measure of how momentum changes over our time. Or in other words, force is a measure of the rate at which momentum changes. And if on this step, if we multiply each side of the equation by delta t, we get force times delta t equals to delta p. Now this looks similar to this one because force times delta t is simply momentum because force times delta t equals to impulse and impulse equals to delta p. And so we have arrived at the first equation. And so this derivation of Newton's second law of motion tells us that impulse is equal to the change in momentum of an object. So there's a relation between impulse and momentum. And this is it for section 1.9 part one. In the next video, we will talk about the law of conservation of momentum and apply it to some examples in real life. Leave a comment in the comment section and provide feedback so I can improve my videos in the future. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.